Hello everyone, good morning. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Um, I am so happy to be here with you. Today is the last tutorial for the Watercolor Christmas Journal. You guys that have been with me through this whole thing, it has been so much fun and it's really fun now that they're, that it's finished and finished in plenty of time for Christmas. So now you can get started on your second one. So I have had uh, so much fun doing these tutorials and uh, like I said, it's really fun to see it now completed. We are on our last page and uh, we'll finish that up today. And you guys, uh, we will be introducing the Harvest Journal now. So all of those products are now available on our website starting today and right now. So <clears throat> there are 10 new sets, 10 new items in the new release, uh, including one that you guys have been asking for. So I just gotta show this to you first because um, you guys have been asking for this and it's the paper pack. So <laughs> we've got paper now that is going to go with this Harvest Journal. So you guys have been asking for that and we've heard you. So that is now available. So you can purchase these things individually, each one set at a time. There'll be two weeks between each tutorial and uh, or you can buy them all at once in the bundle and get a discount. So all of that is available on the website right now. So you'll be able to go there and check that out. And I'm gonna show it to you under the camera so that you can see the correct orientation of all of the sets. And then I wanna show you the Harvest Journal, what we're gonna be starting on in two weeks. So these products are all available right now. You've got lots of time to get them. And uh, the first tutorial for the Harvest Journal will be in two weeks. So two weeks from today will be the first Harvest Journal tutorial. And we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be doing part by part, part with that. They will be lives unless we get to where we're not finishing before Thanksgiving. So my goal is to finish before Thanksgiving and uh, get these Harvest uh, Journals done quickly. So. If that happens and things are going a little slower, I'll record a couple of them so that you can finish your journal in plenty of time before Christmas. So, uh, and also don't forget the bonus journal. So here's that little um, Halloween journal. I'm gonna show this to you again. This is the bonus journal and a lot of the sets that are in the Halloween journal are from the harvest release. So you'll be able to use those things in your Halloween journal. And those tutorials will be posted next week. So all of the tutorials for the bonus uh, journal, those are all going to be recorded. So you know what? You could just get a cup of coffee and put your slippers on and just binge watch that all day long. Uh, all of those parts of that tutorial and create this little Halloween journal really in one day if you really want to do that. So those will all be posted uh, next week and uh, you'll be able to get that one done. So we are going to get to that. I wanted to take um, just a minute and say hi to all of you. Um, get my comments going here. And okay, here we go. Um, yes, the new journal sets are awesome. Oh, thank you so much, Tina. She says these are awesome. You know, every time I do one of these things, I think it's my favorite. So when I did the Christmas one, I thought this is the favorite, my favorite thing I've ever done. And then I did the Harvest Journal and you know what? That became my favorite. And then I did the Halloween one and now that's my favorite. So I am having the best time with these and I love that they're really versatile because I'm all about things being versatile and being a good value. So if you purchase these products, I want you to use them in other ways too. And don't forget, these are all great for card making. So uh, the difference is that the ones that fit in the journal are taller and narrower so that they fit on the journal page, but they make great cards. And so even if you're not doing an actual journal, follow along with these tutorials because there's lots of good tips. Uh, lots of instruction and lots of good tips that you could translate over to projects that maybe you have or, or projects that you have, sets that you have. So always keep that in mind. You know, versatility is key. Um, okay, I'm gonna just scroll through here. Maggie is on, hello, Maggie. Uh, Mary says, hello, Queenie <laughs> in Maryland. Oh my word, hello to all of you. And we are, you know, our thoughts and prayers. I tell you, I have been thinking about our people in Florida and these people who are facing this monster, monster storm. I just can't get them out of my mind. I just, 
we've just been praying for them and praying protection over these people. This is just a terrible catastrophic storm. And I just, you know, it's just, it's a, kind of a helpless feeling, you know, not that what can I do, but I can pray and I can trust that God will, you know, protect these people that are just in harm's way. So I just am thinking about all of you guys in Florida, all of our people there and um, praying that this storm moves quickly through with as little devastation um, as possible. So um, yes to all of you who are on. Um, Ruth Ann is on. Tasha, Arlene is in California. Uh, Kathy is on. Uh, Andrea, hello, Andrea is on. You guys, I I am so looking forward to this Harvest Journal. I mean, it's been, you know, I've made this, you know, a few weeks ago and I just, I can't, I couldn't wait until these sets came out. So I'm really, I'm excited to finish the Christmas one, but I am just jazzed to start this Harvest one. I think we are gonna just have a blast doing it. And like I said, you can go slower. You could pick the sets that you want and order them as we go. Or if you want to, that bundle is available right now. You can jump on the website and you can order that bundle and have everything in plenty of time. Um, Mary is on. Uh, Sandy, hello from Florida. Oh my goodness, Sandy, how are you doing? Uh, you know, I feel like even though it's hitting that the Tampa Bay area, it's gonna affect the whole state of Florida, like all of you guys are gonna get rain and flooding and just, you know, power loss and send us an update, Sandy, from wherever you are. Uh, Martha, yes, the journal sets are, are available right now on the website. You can just go over there and get them. You can get the, um, the bundle or you can buy them individually. So, and don't forget the paper, you guys. The paper, the paper is included in the bundle. So there are 10 things and I'm gonna go through these as soon as I flip my camera around, I'll go through and tell you every single thing that is in the bundle that is available with this release. So <clears throat> let me just say hi to a couple of other people. Joel is on, uh, he is going to kind of be filling in for Leah. Leah is out this week. So I just wanted to be sure and announce that too to all of you. Maybe you have tried to call her or message her, she is out this week, but we are monitoring her email. So if it's something urgent, something you really need to um, have a question that is answered, email us, feedback at artimpressions.com. So we there is somebody there at the shop who is monitoring that email and can answer those questions. So be sure to do that. Um, who else is on here? Elizabeth from Ocala, Florida. Oh my goodness. Um, Hello to all of you. Nancy from Wisconsin. Oh, from the Grand Canyon. Bobby, hello from California. Uh, Louisiana. East Central Illinois, hello. Uh, Carolyn is on from Louisiana. Who have had, they've had their share of weather too. Uh, Jill is on, hello. Velda is on. Gosh, you guys, it's so great to have you be on here. Thank you so much for joining me. I just, I love having you guys on here with me. I love doing the lives. It's, and you know, when I have to record one, it's really different now. It feels really different because I feel like I'm really alone. Even though I'm alone in my office right now, I feel like I'm with all my people. And just seeing all your comments on here, it just really makes my day. So, um, Let's see, one more thing. Uh, actually, I told you that about Leah being on. I'm gonna flip my camera around so that I can show you this release because um, I wanna show you everything. And then I wanna show you that um, the bonus journal. So the Halloween one that is using a lot of those sets, those images from those sets. So let me flip my camera around and I will come back if you guys have any questions. Make sure that I do this correctly. Um, okay, so let me just make sure I have enough space here and I'm on camera. Okay, here we go. So here, let me show you what is included. First of all, here is that little journal. For those of you who haven't seen it, here is the Harvest Journal. I'm gonna go through this uh, as soon as I show you everything that's in the bundle so that you can see what we're gonna be doing and especially our first project, which will be in two weeks. So let me set this aside for now. 
and let me show you what is in here. So here's the cover. Here's the little guy on the cover. This little scarecrow, he is in here along with these two little sunflowers. Let me, you know what, let me just show you as we go through this because um, I want you to see what we're gonna be doing with these. So here is, here is that journal. I love the colors in here, which was part of the reason that we really decided to do the papers is because I just love this paper palette. And it's a little different. It's brighter, so it's not typical fall. But I want you to see that you can, um, you can use other papers that maybe aren't what you would originally use. So it sort of, um, helps you, you know, break out of the box a little bit and, you know, stretch yourself a little bit. So here's those, here's those little sunflowers. Let me just hold this up. Here's these little sunflowers. Here's that little uh, can, this little can that they're in. And then our little guy, he is on the cover. So this is him right here. And this is this set. And this is what we're gonna be doing in the very first tutorial. We're gonna be doing the cover. And then we're gonna be doing these two uh, images that go with it. Now this one, this little truck, uh, this is also new. So I'm gonna show you that as we go. Um, try not to lose my place here. Okay, here is the next one. So let me tell you the numbers too as we go. This is 5594. This is the Harvest Scarecrow set. This is the Harvest Wheelbarrow set, and it's 5597. And let me show you a sample of that one. Here's the little wagon, this little guy right here. And you can put anything in here in this wagon. I put some little pots in here, and you know, I tucked a little pumpkin over here. And I just, I have some, you know, florals in there with a little bee, of course. And then this little guy, this little guy here, this little wash tub, look how cute that is. That's in this set also. So the wagon, the wheelbarrow, and the wash tub are all in this set. And these little pumpkins uh, are, all, are in another one, I'll show you. But they will fit in any of these little containers. So you can put pumpkins in here. You can do what I did. You can put those pots in, uh, which is what we'll be doing in the journal. So that's a really, really good uh, fun set. Here is the little farm truck, this little guy. And he also can be hauling all kinds of things. This would be so cute for Christmas too. You could put your little Christmas tree in there and it'd be so cute. Or maybe a guy's card. You could put a bunch of brush and you know stuff in there. Um, the little tractor also, isn't that cute? This little guy. And the tractor with the little wagon, which would also be a really cute page next to each other. Um, the tractor and the wagon. So let me show you a sample of this, which is on the very back page. So here is that little wagon, or that little, um, here is the tractor, and here is the truck. And what I did on this one is I just cut a little slot across here and tucked this little envelope. This is from the die set, the original die set. Tucked this little envelope in there. And I just think that turned out so cute. So, and it's tucked in this little in this little pocket here. And then, um, so that's that one. This is number 5543, or no, excuse me, 5596. So it's for use with the template set. So 5543 is the journal template set. So we have that included on here. 5596, Harvest Farm Truck Set. And here are the pumpkins. So this is what I mean by the, uh, the pumpkins fitting into those containers. So you can see it on the package. Here's that little wash tub. And these will fit right in there. Here's the stack of them. And the neat thing about this set are these little vines that come with it. And I can't tell you how many of these I tried till I got them the way that I wanted them. And I think they're just perfect. So it's sort of an accent. You're gonna add that at the end, but they're really, really versatile. They're a great size. And I think they're gonna be really fun to use with lots of different things. I mean, they come in the pumpkin set, but I think they're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to use them in a lot of other ways too. So I don't know if that's my favorite part of the set, but it's certainly... Uh, right up there with the pumpkins too. So here's um, here's what those pumpkins look like. There they are in the wash tub, and I think I've got them in. Oh, I do. I have them in uh, the little wheelbarrow as well. So you can see they just fit perfectly in here. And here's the little greens with them. I just think that's so cute. I just love it when things come together, you guys. I absolutely love it. And then it's so hard for me to wait to show you. I just, you know, want to immediately show you. So I'm just so excited that I can finally um, show you all these really, really fun things um, that we can that we can do together. 
Um, okay, let's go on to the next one. So this is also a really fun one. These are kind of like foundations. Um, they're really simple little projects and they're all complete. So they're meant to take up the entire page. So sometimes things are made to go together to make them more versatile. Other times I feel like you want to do a full scene that is actually the entire page. So let me show you, um, where that is. So here is, here's the little, um, the little ladder and the little bird with all of this coming out of it. I just think this is just, it's so fun. Notice all the white paint, you guys, just so much white paint here, but I think it really, really brightens it up and adds a little flair to it. I just am absolutely in love with it. I love it so much. And I find, you guys know, if you've been watching me, know I find an excuse to use it in about every single project that I do, including adding some little highlights on here, which also brightens everything up. So I just think it adds so much. So here's that little foundation. And you can see it's an entire page. It's just an entire page. And it actually, um, you could add a little um, little butterfly to it, or you could add something else. Maybe you could add a little pumpkin to it too. So, <clears throat> This will be a really, really versatile set. And then this one, um, let me see, where is that? Is that in here? I think it is. Oh yeah, it's in the center. So here it is. Uh, notice the white paint again. Uh, and the different palette. I just, I love this really bright, fun palette. And of course, you could go in and do your, you know, your oranges and reds and all of those harvest yellow golds. You could do all of those colors as well. So always keep that in mind. This is, this is what I'm showing you, but my, my goal is to inspire you so that you can kind of venture out on your own and try different things. So here is that little foundation. You can see everything comes with it. All you have to do is add your florals or your vines, you know, in it, and you've created your little, um, your little scene right here. Super fun. And we're going to be doing all of these together. If you uh, follow me with this journal, we're going to be doing all of these. So, um, I'm going to have tutorials for all of them. Okay, here, this is one of my favorite new things, are these little mice and squirrels. And I just, these came late, so they're not in the journal, but I'm going to put them in the journal. Uh, I absolutely love these little guys, and they're super fun to use. You can tuck one up on top of the, um, you know, up on uh, just about anywhere. You could put a little squirrel right here on the uh, the arm of the chair. You could put a little mouse tucked in behind here. They're really, really little. Look at how small they are. They're super small, but they're really fun and they're really easy to color. And I'm going to show you how to do that too. Um, <clears throat> cause it's really important how to, to know how to, how to color these things. And when you've got that mastered, you're not afraid to use them and you're going to use them in lots of ways because you're going to know exactly <clears throat> how to color them. So they're not in the journal because like I said, we got them late, but, uh, we're going, we're going to incorporate them into the journal for sure. Uh, new sentiment. So these, we, I included so many of these in the, in the Christmas one. I love these because they're small and simple and you can put them in a banner anywhere. Um, so there are all, these are all new harvest, grateful hearts, thankful, uh, Thanksgiving. All of these things are new here so that you can put them on a banner, include them into your journal. So we're going to be using these as well. So this is just a great set. Um, let me see if I, okay, here's one that I put in this little wreath. And it is this, this little one right here. And I just tucked it in this wreath. And you know, a wreath is a fun and simple thing to do. So never forget about wreaths. We don't do enough tutorials with them, but they are so fun and really, really quick. And you don't need a lot of stamps. So, um, if it's overwhelming to you to think about, uh, how many images are in here, we can do a lot with a border. You know, a simple border, which I think I have also have in here. A uh, simple little border like this one and some a uh, sentiment. You know, these are these are the little alphabet sets that came out with the Christmas journal. And you can put a little sentiment in here, a little thankful with a cute border, just a simple pumpkin and a few little vines. So keep that in mind, too. You can do your journal really, really simply. You can do it simple. Uh, I tucked in a little I meant this to look like a gift card. So I just kind of made it because I thought that would be so cute right there. And I also really love that yellow paper. Um, okay, here, this is also included. Let me let me do one more stamp set here. 
This one also I love. And you guys have asked me for hay bales. And I really, I, I love this hay bale. I love the size of it. I think it's super versatile. It has just the right amount of lines. So you guys, when I do these, uh, images. I, I do several versions of everything and I send them up and I get a sample plate made and then I test them. I test them and make adjustments to them. So when I come out with something that is final, I have tested it and I know that it works. So I'm really, really happy with um, that hay bale. And I think that might be one that came later. Nope. Here it is. This is it right here. Look how simple that is. A little hay bale and a little um, pumpkin uh, with some little vines. I mean, how cute. You could to put this on a little card with a Thanksgiving sentiment and it would be so cute. A little mouse or a little squirrel. So cute. And I love, I love the size of them. I think they, they're going to be great. Uh, got a little rake, some leaves. Um, this little guy at the end is on our last page and I just kind of tucked him into a little frame, a little window frame. And I think it turned out really cute. So this is also a great set. I don't know if I had to pick. I don't know which set would be my favorite. They're all extremely versatile. Uh, you're going to be able to use them a lot. And I feel really good about saying that when I come out with something like this, especially a bundle, a release that has 10, 10 items in it. I want to feel, I want you to know that I really um, value versatility and want to, you to know that um, these things are really, you can use them in a lot of different ways. So that's always my goal. There is also this little die set and I love it. Here it is right here. This is the actual size. Here's one of these little things that are, that's in it. This little thankful sentiment. I love incorporating things like this too. And I added it, uh, I added this little rake to my watercolor. Uh, it's a little three dimensional. It just adds a little more interest. And I've got these little leaves that I just tucked in to this little um, pocket here. Uh, I love this set. Now, if you order the, the bundle, this is not going to be in it yet. It's included in the bundle price and you will get it, but it's back ordered until next week. We have been scrambling to get all these things in on time. This one isn't quite here yet, but it is coming, but it's not going to hold up your bundle. If you order the bundle, it's going to ship immediately and you will have it. And then this will come separate. So it's, it's in the bundle. It's included in the price. You will get it. It's just that we didn't quite get it here in time. And I didn't want to tie up the entire bundle, uh, because I want you to get it in time so you can follow along with the tutorial in two weeks. So you will be getting all of these in your bundle. And I absolutely love them. I love them. This is Joel's work. He puts all of these together and he did an absolutely uh, wonderful job with all of these. I love all the leaves. I think that is so cute. And you could tuck some leaves around everything. You could put them on your little frames. Uh, you could tuck them into uh, one of these little wagons. I think they're going to be so versatile. There's also a little pine cone, which uh, will be so fun to use. The little vine uh, that you could tuck in anywhere with the leaves. I think it's just going to be so fun to use these. So I'm excited for them to come too. And we'll be um, incorporating them into our journal because that is part of the journal um, set. Okay, and moving on to the paper. This is also included in the bundle. You will be getting this paper pack and it is 24 sheets. It's 80 pound. So it's really heavyweight. It's really, really nice. Uh, it's our top quality paper. Uh, you will be getting 12 designs and actually uh, it's 24 sheets. So it's two of each one and they're double sided. So you're going to be getting lots of paper. The back side is stripes, so it's different than the front. And uh, it's all my favorites. Now, these papers that are in this actual journal are from paper packs that I've used. So we've ch we've changed things up so that we are not taking um, the exact paper that, you know, is part of these other sets. So we've, we've changed these up and made them our own. And um, I just absolutely love this paper palette so much. It's so different. And I, I love the brightness of it. And I just think it's, it's just really fun. So this is included in the, in the pack. It's going to be able to, you're going to have plenty of paper to do your journal and some extra too. So I, that being said, I am just, I'm so jazzed to get going on this. I think we're going to have so much fun with it. The very first tutorial will be the cover, this little scarecrow and the first page. 
So that will be tutorial one. We're going to be going through this and then we'll work our way through. Uh, we'll work our way through and see how long these things take. And like I said, I may need to um, just record a couple because uh, we need to finish by December 1st for sure. And I'd love to finish before Thanksgiving. <clears throat> so really quickly so that we can get on to our, uh, our Christmas. I want to just show you quickly the um, bonus. This is a bonus journal, and I made this so that you could use the sets that you're buying, your harvest sets, you could use them in another journal like this one. So this is to give you other ideas on how you can use these things. So here is our little sc scarecrow. Let me just show you. Let's do a little comparison here. Here's the harvest one. Here is the Halloween one. And I put a little pumpkin on his head because I just thought that would be so fun. And he's got a little bat with him. And then here is the little hay bale. Here's the hay bale. Here are the two pumpkins. Uh, here's the little wheelbarrow. It's got all the little, um, <laughs> all the little sticks and everything to make it more Halloween. Um, and these will all be recorded, you guys. So you're going to have tutorials on all of this. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to show you how to make all of these. Here's the cute border again. Um, it's just different. It's just got little uh, jack-o'-lanterns. And how cute are the teeth, you guys? i got to show you this. I showed this last time, but I absolutely love these little teeth on here. And I, I think I added twice as many pumpkins so that I could put the teeth on. And you'll recognize that's the white paint. So <laughs> I just think that is so fun. It changes up their little faces so much. And I absolutely love making these pumpkins. So I'm going to show you how to make those too in the tutorial. <clears throat> here's the door this is from the Christmas set so if you made the Christmas journal with me you've got this door and I just turned it into a little Halloween one here's that container that the sunflowers were in uh, that comes in that sunflower set and I just turned it into Halloween put one of our little cats on there pull a hat on his head here's the little ladder so this is the ladder that has look how different this is you guys I just got to show you this look at how versatile these things are so here's, here's the same ladder. Here is the same ladder with the two pumpkins, only I tucked this little mouse in here and I took the bird off and tucked this little mouse in here and I put some webs on it and some funny vines and I added this little spider to it. And how cute is that? So keep that in mind. You know, you guys, you can change these up so much. Um, these are new. So these two sets are new. These will be out next week. And um, these two sets are brand new. And they'll be out when the tutorials are released. Uh, <clears throat> including this one too. This little pumpkin with the little candy that goes in it. Uh, here's that stack of pumpkins that's in the front. So here it is. This is that same stack of pumpkins right here. Um, Halloween theme. Notice all the teeth, you guys. I just, I had so much fun making those teeth. I can't even tell you. You'll hear it on the tutorials too, because I'll just be going on and on about the teeth on the pumpkins. <laughs> so fun. Uh, okay, here's another one. Here's the little barn. This is from the Christmas journal, you guys. Um, same same sentiment or uh, same image. And let me just show you because you know what? I happen to have it right here. Here is the difference. So here it is for Halloween. And it's not in the uh, harvest journal, but this would be so cute as a harvest. So you could you could take this pumpkin, leave the face off and make this um, make this fall, which would be so cute. Really cute. Uh, the little bee, you guys, I had to do a little bee. And this is from the little um, angel set, this little girl. <clears throat> and I left her wings on, and I just created this little bee costume and put the little, stamp the little bee on here. Don't forget with these little bugs, they can also be stamped onto your watercolor paper. So they don't necessarily have to be popped up. I popped them up on my other journal, but you could just stamp it in here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to make her too. This, by the way, was inspired, inspired by Michelle, Michelle Haskins, uh, who made one of these little, one of our little girls from one of the little girl sets and uh, probably the little boy too, put them in a costume. And I just thought that was the cutest thing ever. So here I am with a bee um, inspired by Michelle Hoskins. Um, with her little characters. Uh, here's the wash tub and the pumpkins. So same one, same wash tub, wash tub and pumpkins. Here they are with the little faces and the little webs. And by the way, I'm going to show you how to make these webs. They're so easy. You can put a web, you're going to be putting webs on everything um, when I show you how to do those. So same thing, same tutorial. Here's that little, um, 
hay bale again. Absolutely love it. With a little pumpkin on top. So cute and super, super simple. So uh, we will also have paper with this one. So you guys, all of these things are going to be available to you when these stamps come out. There are only uh, a few things that are new because the majority of these are going to be part of the harvest, um, the harvest release. So these, these sets that are used in here, the way the majority of them are from uh, the harvest. There's just a couple of new ones. So let me now put this aside, you guys, so that we can get on to our Christmas project. <clears throat> And let me put this one aside too until two weeks when we start that. Let me show you these one more time. So 5592, this is the Harvest Journal die set. This is included in the bundle. All of these things now are included in the bundle that I'm showing you. Uh, 5598, this is the Harvest set with the hay bales and uh, the little rake. Uh, the sentiments, 5600, the Harvest sentiment set. My little guys here, my little squirrels and mice. Um, 5599. It's a little mini set. These are really little, you guys. Little. They're so fun. Uh, this little foundation set, this harvest scene set, 5593. This is a really, really versatile one. You could also, you know, with this, you could take the pumpkins off and you could just ink everything but these little pumpkins and you could put a little pot in here, which would be so cute. Here is the uh, harvest pumpkin set with the little curly Q vines. Absolutely love this. Uh, <clears throat> it's so fun. It, this, this stack also comes with this little bucket. So it's all part of this image here. So you can see why uh, these things are made for journaling because they're narrower and they're taller. So they're made to fit on that page, on the journal page. And that's why I create them um, this size. <clears throat> Here's our little front um, cover, the little scarecrow. This is 5594 Harvest Scarecrow set. Comes with these little sunflowers that I absolutely love. Absolutely love this little set. Um, <clears throat> this is a Harvest Wheelbarrow. So you get all three of these containers, which are going to be so versatile. You'll be able to put so many different things in there. Fill this up with flowers. Uh, fill these up for spring with pots. Um, they're, they're just going to be so versatile. So this is Harvest Wheelbarrow set, 5597. And then the little farm truck set that is the farm truck and the tractor, which I just love these chubby little things. And I uh, made this little, um, the little truck set for Christmas and I absolutely love it. We did it on the last tutorial. We did the little truck. They're, they're just, they're kind of cute and fat. And I just, I think they're so cute and I love, love coloring them. So <clears throat> I added this little farm truck, which also you could take the little railing off. So, you know, it's going to be really versatile. You're going to be able to do a lot of different things with it. Um, <clears throat> and then also the little tractor that could be pulling a little wagon. So that also would be really, really cute. <clears throat> so, and the paper, the paper pack, 24 pieces, double-sided, 80 pound paper. Um, love this palette so much. This is available separate too. So if you if you don't want to buy the bundle, you can get all of these things individually on our website. So keep that in mind too. Okay, now that I've spent a half hour, you guys, just chatting with you, let's get on to our project. So here is where we're at. We have completed all of these pages in our Christmas journal, which has been so much fun. Um, we've done all of these tutorials. We finished up the uh, center. Uh, we finished up the first page onto the, the, um, the right side of the journal. And this one we did not glue in because we're going to do the back side of it today. So here's that little chubby truck that we did last time. I just absolutely love these little cars. I think they're so cute. Um, and, you know, I think maybe the inspiration, probably why I love them so much, is my collection is, um, this is really kind of off the wall, but I have had for years collected Tecron cars. Do you guys know what those are? The Chevron Tecron cars with the little faces, and they're just talking, just kind of randomly talk. I'll have to show you guys on my next tutorial. I'll show you what, what one of them are, but I have so many of them. I have them all over and I absolutely love them. And they're kind of shaped like this. They're kind of chubby and cute. And I, that's probably why I love these so much. Um, so we're going to do the back side of this. Uh, and then we're going to do the back cover. So we're going to be finishing up here with this tutorial. And um, 
and then we will be finished with this Christmas journal. You guys, I'm so proud of you to get this far with me. Um, so here is what I'm using. And I went ahead and I pre-stamped because I knew I would be talking about um, this Harvest Journal. So I pre-stamped all of these. We're going to be doing four little projects here. And I just pre-stamped them and die cut them. Now, what I've done before is um, have one already made, but you can also do it this way. You can die cut your image that is going into your journal and then you can you can watercolor it that way too so that's what i did this way just to kind of save time is i die cut these and then i stamped them and now we're good to go so let me show you what else we're using and what those sets are from so this is from the uh, church and ornament set this is 5573 we're going to be using this little church we've used these already uh, the little stockings are part of the door set. So door and stocking set 5574 is the um, is from this set. And then uh, from foliage set four, we're going to use just the tip of these little foliages. You could use either one, the right or the left. Um, either one are fine. Uh, in this one, the, the Bible journaling, this is foliage set two. Absolutely love this set. It's so versatile. Um, I use it all the time. Kendra loves this because the Kendra dots are in here. But it's really, really versatile. It's part of the Bible journaling um, line, but it is so versatile for all of it. It's all watercolor. So it doesn't matter uh, what set you're using, whether it's in the Bible journaling or in the um, regular watercolor line. It all is the same technique. So we're going to be using this little branch here and these little vines right here. So we're going to be using those two. And then uh, the watercolor tree set. We're going to be using our little fir tree right here, which uh, we have just used throughout this whole journal. We've used that. Uh, in here, what am I using in here? Oh, okay, I, I'm not actually not using, I ended up uh, going with a larger vine. So you could use this one. If you don't have, if you don't have um, this set here with the tip that we're using with the tip, you can use this one. If you've got the mini flower set, you can use this. We're going to be using this to create the wreath. And then the midi critters. So these little guys, we're going to be using two of these little fox and the little um, the little deer, both of these little guys. And then uh, the sentiment set. Yes, we're going to be using this one. And I just picked one of these. So let me show you the completed one and what it's going to look like. So here is the completed journal. Here is the page that we're going to be working on today. And you can see our two little critters here. Um, is on the back of the little truck page. And then the little church is going to be on the right-hand side over here. And then we're going to be doing the back. And it's a pocket and the little stockings. And I just, this is what I, I use the sentiment for. I just put this, I just put a sentiment at the top and um, tucked it into the pocket. So that's what I use for that. So let's get going here. And uh, let's get our little projects finished. So I'm going to start out with a little church, and I am missing a stamp here. So let me just grab uh, my little vines here. So these guys I was missing. Uh, when I showed you what I was <laughs> going to be using in the tutorial, I thought, oh, I better grab those. Um, I better grab these because we're going to be using these. So I'm going to just actually set this, put this on top of here so it's a little bigger canvas, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm drop this down and zoom in um, to here so that you can see this. Um, does anybody have any questions? Joel is on. Um, Joel is on right now. So if you have any questions and I haven't seen, um, oh, Teresa, she says you work so hard. I appreciate it. I am so thankful to be able to do this, you guys. I I just I hope that comes through because. I absolutely love what I'm doing. And my favorite part is seeing the, what you guys can do. And I've heard so many people say that, you know, they're not artists and they're not able to create beautiful things. And yes, you are. You can do it. These projects that are in these journals, they're so simple. They're really, it's for all skill levels. So even if you're a beginner, you can do these projects. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to teach you. And you're going to just love creating these beautiful things. And I absolutely love this part of it. Um, I love and I'm just so thankful that I uh, get to do what I love to do. And I love the creative part of it. I love the people. And I love creating artists 
more so than I love creating the art. I really, really do. I feel like that's my mission is to create artists. And I just, I feel like it's, um, it's a, it's more of a ministry. It's more of a calling. Um, it's just, it just, um, inspires me and I just love it so much. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing this little church, you know, and it also can be any season. So this would also be really, really cute fall with some um, fall trees in the background. Uh, maybe not a vine growing up, but maybe a little um, pumpkin, you know, in here somewhere or, you know, just the fall colors. It would be so cute. So any of these images are really, they're really generic. You're going to be doing lots of different things with them. Um, okay, let's get going here. I'm going to uh, start out by dipping my brush uh, in water. And actually, uh, I'm just going to take a little piece of post-it tape and just tack this down. So I have a little bigger canvas here. And it does not it's not moving around. So I'm going to take my brush and dip it in water. And I'm going to pull the color out of the light. Now, let me just say one more thing here. And I know I've just been so chatty this <laughs> I've been so chatty this this morning, and but let me just tell you one more thing. Uh, what I would recommend now, uh, if you don't have a stamp platform, I would recommend that uh, it's not something we carry on our website, but you can get them everywhere, and there are lots of different ones now. Um, I use a stamp platform when I am stamping a large image like this because, uh, and and if you have if you're not sure what a stamp platform is, I can do a tutorial on that and I can show you how to use it. I don't have mine right with me right now, but I can show you next time uh, when we start the Harvest Journal. But when you're doing a large image like this and when you're adding um, color to it and like we are, we're adding snow, you want that image to be light. It's really, really important how it's stamped. It really is. And it's becoming more important because this technique, everything evolves and it's really evolved you know, over the last few years, and it's changed a lot. And I feel like it's, um, it's uh, becoming, um, how should I say, of a, uh, more of a, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, just, um, it's sort of t taking it to the next level, as far as what we're creating, we're creating these works of art that really are works of art. And so it's really, sometimes the details are really important, like how you stamp it. Now, the one that I use, the stamp platform I use has a cushion on it. And that really makes a difference. And the thing about it is you can put your watercolor paper in, you place your image on top, and these are clear so you can see exactly where you're placing it, which is one of the reasons, or lots of reasons why I've gone to the clear, but one of the reasons I've gone to the clear is to be able to see exactly where you're placing it. And especially with a large image like this one, you can see exactly where it's going. You lay it on there, you put it onto your, uh, your platform, your stamp platform, and now you can ink it up and stamp it off at least twice on a piece of scrap paper, scrap watercolor paper, stamp it off, and then stamp it onto your, um, your canvas. And you can get a perfect impression. And this to me, this is a perfect impression here. And you can see it's, it's really uniform. I love, if you can see it really close, you see these little tiny areas where it looks like the ink is kind of blobbed a little bit. I love that about the clear. That's one of the things that I love about it. It's not straight, even lines. And we don't want that. We don't want straight, even lines because it, do, it looks too uniform. We want it to look like a painting. And so when we get these little areas that have extra little ink on them, that is, that's the clear and being able to do that with a larger image. And so more ink pulls out with a brush and you can get this soft image uh, with that by using a stamp platform. Now you can use an ink, you can use a block also. And what I'm talking about are larger images like this one, but you can stamp that over and you can pull it up and maybe there's a little tiny area that maybe you didn't get, get ink on, put it, put the lid down and stamp it again. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you want to see a tutorial of that, I will include it when I start the, the harvest journal. I'll show you that in the very beginning because it really makes a difference. And we're doing these images and we're creating these works of art. It really, really, matters how you stamp your your uh, beginning image your basic image it really matters now when it comes to things that we stamp over and over again like vines florals those are always going to be rubber because the ink 
doesn't doesn't hold onto the clear stamp like it does onto the rubber. We have to be able to get those multiple impressions, one, two, three, four, five, where we're going from dark image to light image. And the light, the dark comes forward and the light fades back. So it's really important that we get that dark to light. So when it comes to the larger images, it's really, uh, it's a really, um, it's not critical, but it, it would be a good thing to invest in if you're going to be doing lots of journals, lots of larger images, and you don't have a stamp platform, it would be a really good thing to, um, to invest in. And like I said, they, they run the gamut for price. You can get one for fairly inexpensive and you can get a really expensive one for, you know, um, I think they're, you know, probably $60, $70, but you can get a, you can get a, a, um, a less expensive one and they're just, you can find them anywhere. So it really, really makes a difference when you're stamping because you can stamp off twice. You can see your image and then you can place your original canvas in there and get your basic image and it will turn out perfectly every time. Okay. So I promise I'm getting to the project now, you guys. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's get going. I'm going to dip my brush now in water. And I'm going to pull the color out of the lines. Now, that being said, I stamped this off twice. I stamped it off twice and I used my two basic colors. So blue first, dark blue, 565 and 969. So blue first, cover the whole image, go right over the top of it with the dark brown, 969. Stamp it off twice. Stamp it off twice. And then stamp it onto your original campus. So that would be the third time on your original campus. The can uh, canvas campus. Okay, so now we're going to start out by pulling the color out of the lines. And you know, when you're pulling it from the bottom, that's going to raise up this area because we're creating a shadow. And what that does is it lifts the image. It just lifts it up. You can see how that also looks like this is now down below. And we're just going to pull a little bit out here in these little windows inside here where the door is. We're going to pull that color to the inside of the line. And that sets that door back inside. Now here, this little area, this is raised. So we're going to pull that color from this side of the line. And that pushes up this area here. So let's just turn this and do this side. And I'm not using very much water. These are all like really um, important little things. And when you add up all the little things, that's how you're successful. And you're going to, you're going to finish art. You're going to complete art that you're really, really proud of, uh, because you've learned these simple little techniques and they are, they're really simple. So now I've set the windows back. I've set the door back and I've brought this forward. See how that works. It just, to me, it's still, after all the years I've been doing this, it's like magic it really is. This has now come forward. This has gone back. This has gone back. This little, um, this little, um, area here on the roof line that's come forward. And now, and this is, by the way, this is things that are flat. So things that are contoured are a little different when you have something that's rounded. You're going to pull that color off, uh, to the sides and you're gonna pull it in. So this is things that are just flat that I'm talking about here. Because these things that are contoured, you're gonna pull that color to the side. You're gonna drag it out. So we create that, um, we create that little um, highlight. And now this little steeple, see, this is a contour now, this little steeple. So we're doing, we're going to do it a little different. We're going to drag this color to the center. So we have a little highlight here. Okay. Same with this. This is rounded. So we're going to drag that color in. So now we've got something that is starting to look three dimensional. Okay. So let me grab my palette here. <clears throat> grab my palette and let me just move these out of the way here we'll come back to those let's use this side okay so let's now uh let's add the little wreath to um the front of our church and i'm going to use this this little stamp here if you don't have this one you can also use this one either one is going to work and i've used this one every time and I thought this time I'm just going to, I'm going to do this one, make a little larger uh, leaf. And so I'm using my, uh, my cool green. So my number 249 and turn your canvas when you're doing these. And if you want to, um, you can do a little circle to kind of give you a guideline. 
So, you know, maybe you're just, you're not sure where your, uh, so your stamp's going and you want to make sure that you're making this the correct size. Do a little pencil line like that and then you can erase it afterwards. So, like I said, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just ink the, the, the little tip and just kind of work my way around. So you can go backwards or forwards. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. And you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to add, we're going to add some water to this and we're going to kind of blur it up a little bit. So, and just the tip. So here's the um, versatility again. Um, you can, you don't need to use the whole stamp. Most of the time we don't. Most of the time we're just using parts of it. So cute that is. Just so cute. So simple. And it adds so much detail. The simple things. I love it when the simple things are so profound. And you put them on and you're just like, oh my gosh, that's so neat. I just love that. And I'm just touching it. Just touching it just like that. Okay, so let's go on now. We're going to add some snow and we're going to add some uh, details later to all of this. So I'm going to uh, do the little windows and I'm going to use my 565. And I purposely left the window panes out of here. So we're just going to brush them in. And I think I'm going to just switch to my little brush here, my number one or my number zero. Either one of those are going to be great. And I'm going to take some of this color on my palette. And start out light, you know, it's always a good idea to start out light. And then, you know, just figure out, you know, kind of where your little window panes are. You can also um, do that with a with a pencil too. So you can you can draw a line down here, like this, and that kind of tells you where your um, where your little window panes are. And, but you want to leave a white space, kind of leave a white space in between. So be careful when you're putting your, uh, your pencil line on that you don't uh, brush the color clear up to the pencil. So you leave, you're leaving a little white space in between. And just, you know, brush it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's better if it's not. And then we're going to be adding snow to these windows anyway. So, you know, the white snow forgives a lot of mistakes. Uh, if you get too much color on or, you know, you overstep a line somewhere. Um, the white paint, you guys, the white paint. It's amazing. So this one I'm going to do without the lines and you can kind of see if it would help you to include them. And just brush it in. Don't worry about it being too exact. You're going to get the idea, you know, that there's window panes in this church. And like I said, we're going to add, we're going to add some snow to it too. So I'm going to now just come in here a little darker on the side. And a little darker on this side. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to take my, my little eraser and I'm just going to erase my pencil lines here and my pencil lines here. Most of the time, uh, your ink will just cover it up and you don't even have to erase it. It'll just kind of cover it up. So either, you know, either way, whatever works better for you, um, you can do it that way. Um, okay, so now the church is going to stay white, So, but we're still going to add some little shadows and stuff in here. But let's go ahead and do, um, let's do our little lamppost. And this is where the little vines come in. So I'm going to use this one and the other one too, I think. They both they go um, two different directions. So depending on how you want your little vines to grow up onto your um, onto your little light post lamp post and I'm using the two, 249 so this is that cool green I really really partial to this for Christmas scenes because it's just a cool color it's not that it doesn't have any warmth to it it's it's got a lot of blue in it and it just reminds me of like a, a snowy you know a snowy scene that's cold outside so uh but by all means you can use whatever <clears throat> ones you want whatever color green you want to use 
And now I'm gonna just switch, I think, and just maybe add this one. Actually, maybe I want this one to kind of come up like this. And maybe I'll just put one over here too. And you can use any, whatever foliage you want on this lamppost. I mean, I'm using these little holly um, ivy vines, but you could you could for sure use um, some fir boughs too. Okay, so let's get a little yellow here. This is the 993 yellow. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this into into the lamppost. Leave a little white um, area in the center. That will give you the impression that it's white hot. So when you're thinking about a lamppost, you know, you should be able to see that little white light in the center like that. And then I'm just going to add a little of this blue um, for a shadow. Just kind of, you know, down the side of this little post. And even though we're leaving it kind of light, um, you're still going to be able to see a, a shadow. And then underneath all these little um, decorative things, there's going to be a little shadow under there. And then we're going to put snow on here too. So, you know, we just, we've got to add the snow to it. And then we're going to put a little tree in here. So <clears throat> we still got that to do. And let's, um, now that we've got this blue, kind of got this blue out, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to put, tuck in a little um, shadow under here. You know, it's just like, it's, it's the uh, same thing with anything. Anything that's uh, white is not uncolored. It's going to have a color. It's going to have a shadow. So you, if you leave it, if you leave it uh, just plain with nothing in it, it's going to look, um, it's gonna look flat. So let's add some color now to the door. And I'm gonna use my dark brown. So that would be the 969. But you can make your door any color too, if you want. And just brush it in just like that. We're gonna add some details to it as soon as it dries. But this is the fun part, you know, adding the color to it and adding the details to it. It just, it's so fun. And I, I think, you know, having the basic image already done uh, sort of takes the stress out of it because you, you just, you know what to do. You know how to finish it. Okay, so let's keep going here. Now we're going to add snow to the top of the roof, so we're not gonna do anything with this up here. And then we're gonna add some um, add some snow to the peak also. So let's go ahead and um, put the details in here. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna get my pencil out and my ruler. A pencil is a great way to add detail to your painting. It's kind of a cheater's way, but it really, it makes a really nice effect. And it's sort of, it's got those broken lines, so it, you're able to see, I mean, it looks like it's painted. It really does. Nobody knows that it's actually just a pencil. And so I'm just adding like some little details in here to the front part of this. And just make them really light. Oops, I kind of should have gone all the way up here, this one. And this one here should have gone all the way up. There we go. And just these little, like just simple little slats here. They don't all have to be the same either. It kind of gives the impression that it's like, you know, kind of like, shiplap and it's an old country church and it just adds a little more detail to it so 
sometimes the little things like this, you know, make the most difference. You know, these little tiny tricks. Look how cute that is. I love it. Absolutely love it. So now I'm going to take my uh, twin tone, my brown, and I'm going to do the same thing with the door. And I'm going to add some texture here into the door with my twin tone. But I'm going to just, you know, oops, that's the wrong end. I'm going to just make sure this is really dark on the side under here, like so. And I'm going to put a line down the center with the little door handles on here. Cute. And then just, you know, really simple, um, really light. And, you know, it doesn't, the lines don't have to be perfect. And put some detail into the door like that. I just think that adds so much. So cute. Okay, let's put our trees in. Let's put our trees in and then we'll put our details into the wreath and uh, the vines. <clears throat> so let's ink this guy up. And we're just gonna, so ink everything but the tree trunk. So we don't need this, we don't need the tree trunk down at the bottom. And let's just stamp this in here like that. And this one, actually, we could do just a little smaller one. I'm just gonna clean this off. I've got a baby wipe over here, so I'm just gonna clean that off and just do maybe a smaller one over here, like that. And now, we're just adding the water to it. And you can bring that, that little tree in front or you can tuck it behind. So <clears throat> you can bring that color to the front of the church like this and that will kind of set that tree in the front of the church. And if you want to tuck it behind, just put a little post-it note and cover that up. And you can kind of drag these little branches out too. Same with this one. I'm going to kind of tuck this one behind. Look like it's a little bit farther in the distance. And I'm just dragging this color down a little bit farther so it's kind of in the snow. And then I'm just going to use my blue, <clears throat> my little blue twin tone, and just get just the edge of these windows. Just like that. And then maybe just up here too. Kind of up in this little roof, roof line. Just a few little spots here. Okay, now let's put in some color in the background. And that will really make our little church pop. So adding this blue, and this is just that dark blue. Get enough water on there when you're doing the sky. Make sure you get enough water so you can just kind of push it around. You're just pushing this color around. The, the uh, most common mistake is just not enough water. And my brush is not leaving uh, the canvas. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything like this. I'm not painting anything. I'm just pushing um, this color all around. And I can bring it right to the roof line because I'm just gonna put a whole bank of snow on there. And the same here too. I'm gonna put some snow on top of this little lamppost. So when I put my brush down on the paper, it's staying there. It's not, um, it's not lifting. And I'm just putting a little color back in here too. And then you can create a little path just with a little stroke, just like this. Just by building that little snow up and you can kind of set this little post in the, 
in the snow also. And then we'll come in and add uh, some more white paint. Okay, it's coming together. So let's, <clears throat> let's add some white to it. Actually, you know what? I think let's do a little detail on this, this little thing here. So I'm just gonna come down. Cute. And I think we can just put a little cross up here too. That'd be so cute. Okay, one more thing. I'm gonna add some uh, red berries here. So this is 856 and I'm gonna use the bullet tip here and I'm just gonna add some little red. This is what really makes it festive. And just, you know, you can put as many in as you want. And then I'm gonna add some more out here, make these just a little bit bigger. Cute, so cute. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's add our white paint. And by white paint, I mean the, my Bleed Proof White, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I'm gonna use my little, um, my little brush and start out just by putting some um, snow in the sky. Just dip it into your little jar. Just like this and add your snow. Just kind of wherever snowflakes are all different sizes. So we could put some in the front here and I can just put a little snow on this wreath. a little bit like it's the snow has just kind of fallen on there uh, let's put a little bit on this lamppost little pile of snow on here and then right along the roof line we're just going to make a stroke like this of snow And I got it pretty thick on here. So it looks like there's just a bank of snow on this roof. All the way down. And then we'll come back in when this is dry and we'll do a little shadow underneath it. And you, could, you can make this pretty wide here. We can get quite a bit of snow on this roof. And then, you know, some snow up in here. And on here. And then we're gonna put some snow in the windows. into little corners like that. And then, of course, our trees. You know, and just don't overthink this. You know, you're just you're just putting a kind of a blob of white just kind of here and there on the trees. And this is where you can add that snow too to the front of your little church here. This little guy, he's this one's gonna have some snow on it. I 
I'm going to miss doing the snow when we do the harvest journals, but you know, we're going to make up for it with the, um, with all the little white we're going to be using. So even though it's not snow, it's still going to be white. There's still going to be, there's still going to be white paint in it. Okay, now we're gonna set this aside and let it dry. You can put this, look how thick I'm putting this on here. You can put this on here pretty thick. And I, I like that it adds like all this extra texture too. That's a really fun. So it's not finished until we get that um, white or that um, blue shadow underneath. So we'll come back and do that as soon as um, this is dry. So we'll go on and finish our other projects. And you know, like I, if you miss the center and you don't get it straight, you can just put it back in like this into your windows. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off and close this up and then let's put this aside so we can get on to our, um, our next project. And we'll come back to that because we have to assemble our, our journal anyway. Um, okay, let's do our little guys, these little guys. And I'm going to do the same thing again um, and attach them to some watercolor paper here, just like this, just so they don't move around. Like so. Okay, so let's start out uh, with these little guys. Pulling the color out of the lines. And actually, I'm gonna go with my little brush again. Clean it off here, I got lots of paint in it. So I'm gonna go with my, um, with my little brush and pull out the color like this. These are such tiny little, little lines. And they don't take much, you know, these little characters, these little critters, they don't take a lot of color. They're pretty simple. You want to um, always keep the eyes light and the top of the head Keep that light. Here's where the, you know, the top of the head is. So you just want to keep that really light. And you can bring a little color down on the side. But this area where the eyes are, that should be really light. And let's just go on to this little guy. Same thing with him. And he's got a little he's got a little white tail tip, so we don't want to add too much color in here. Little fox, so cute. Same thing with his face. You want to leave that top of his head pretty light. And we're going to add some warm uh, brown now. So this is the um, this is the nine forty seven. So I'm going to add some of that to my palette and add some of this color. And just take your time. You know, these little guys are just, they're just so cute. And you know, the tops, think about the tops of the image, you know, should be the lightest. So anything that's down below is gonna be darker. And I'm just gonna get this little hoof, get this little hoof dark.
and just, you know, kind of build the color. You can make them darker. You just, um, you just have to kind of build the color. Keep the eyes light and keep the top of the head the lightest area. Kind of as you're, you know, you're adding a little more color here, you're building a little more color. These little brushes really, really make a difference too. It's little number one and zeros. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit of red to put in his, his ears, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Make his ears a little pink. Cute, and maybe just a little bit on his little cheek here. And then I'm gonna take my, uh, my twin tone and darken his little nose. And his little eye. And see how that just, it just pops everything out. You know, it makes it look, you get a little more dimension uh, when you do those, when you add those dark colors. So let's finish up our little fox. And um, I'm gonna do also do this warm brown on him. Now he should be a little, probably a little more orange. And I could just add a little orange too, to this brown. And he's, you know, his coloring, he's going to, he's going to have this little orange, you know, area and then this little white, white area. So this is going to be pretty light up here. And then this part, you know, his little tip of his tail is light. Uh, he's so easy to color. These little guys are, they're just so easy, but take your time and just go slow and just gradually add the color, build the color up. And, you know, mixing color is always going to be a win. You know, take a little of something and just kind of mix it so you don't have the exact same color all the time. Little chest is probably white. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of this blue just to get a little shadow under his white tail. It's a white cheek. And let's do the same thing with the with the twin tone and get his little nose and his eye. So cute. And we could get just a little pink on his cheek too. And a little pink in his ear. And those little guys are done. So now we're gonna add just a little foliage at the top and uh, a little color uh, around them. So I think let's do the color. Let's do the color first, the blue. And let's get that in. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're just gonna add this blue in the background and just kind of push it around. So he's got that night sky. So when we add our snow, um, we can see our snowflakes in here. So you want to get it pretty dark. And then, you know, where he, where they're kind of laying, um, we can just kind of build it up a little bit like this. So we don't have to do a lot here. This is pretty snow, pretty um, snowy underneath. So that would be, that would be pretty white anyway.
These guys would be really cute in the harvest one too. A little fox. A little harvest journal. That just the possibilities are endless, you guys. And I just, you know, I'm going to put just a little um, shadow underneath here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to turn this a little bit and uh, put this foliage in at the very top. Just the tip again. So I'm just using the very tip and just stamping this in just a little bit, just like that. And over here, same. Dip my brush, pinch it off. And just lightly, I mean, you know, you want to see some definition of these leaves. So don't get too much water on there, but um, blend it up a little bit. And it always blends, green always blends in really well with the blue. So putting the blue on first is, um, it doesn't really matter because you could do the green and then add the blue and it's going to blend just fine. So either way, it's going to work. And then let's put the little berries in. This is what makes it look Christmassy, these little berries. So cute. And these guys, little guys are finished. I think that, I think they turned out so cute. Let's add our snow, so our white. And, you know, it would be really cute just to add some little dots to the deer to his back. He's a little baby one. So we can just really lightly. Whoops. Cute. That's really cute. And then our little snowflakes. And maybe a little snow on the branches. A little more snow on the branches. And you can, you can build up this little snowy area here, too, if you want to. And put him in a little snowbank. Okay, those two little guys are finished. So let's set these guys off to the side for now. And then let's finish up our little stockings. And then we can assemble our journal. And we can actually be done, you guys. We're going to finish this journal today. I can't believe it. Okay, so here's the next one. These little guys. And they are so fun. These are really fun to do because you can just, you can make them whatever colors you want, whatever patterns you want. Now that we've got the white, you can add some white stripes to them. So the first thing I'm going to do always is pull the color out. See, these are hanging over, so the color is on the bottom, and that brings them forward. And then down under here, these are contours, so we're going to go along the bottom and create a little, kind of a little bank. And then inside, this sets back, so that color is going to be on the other side. And we've got a little three-dimensional image already. So fun. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's start out by, let's add some color. 
to them. And I'm gonna add some warm color to my palette. So this is the number uh, 526. And I'm just gonna start out with this one. And I'm gonna add some color to this little stocking. I'm gonna leave, kind of leave the toe and add another color to the toe. And, and actually, because I'm doing this so light, I could just probably just stamp right over the top or a color right over the top. So let's go on to the next one and let's do the next one with the green. So it's the same green, 249. And I'm gonna add, just add some color in here. You know, always try not to um, color it all in solid or all in solid the same. And then let's get some red on here. And some green. So let's add a little green to the toe. Of this one and a little bit back here and some red to this one and I just left just a little highlight on the top you can also add that in with the white and then this I'm just going to do a red stripe on here. And just kind of follow the um, follow the lines of the of the stocking. So you can kind of see how it's hanging here. So fun it's so fun doing these and let's add some detail in here now let's just add some stripes maybe let's add something in here and and I'm just using the bullet tip of my um, of my marker that is so cute and I'm just going to add uh, just a little shadow make sure the red is out of my brush always make sure the red is out of your brush so back in here because this little stocking is white And I'm just going to leave the tops of these white. So I'm just going to put a little shadow in here, just along the edge. And then inside here, where it's kind of folded over. And then I'm just going to add some blue in the background. And we can't really put, you know, snowflakes in the background because these stockings probably wouldn't be hanging outside. I mean, maybe they would. But they're probably hanging on a fireplace somewhere or we're just giving the impression that there's a there's a background. So you could use any color behind here.
Okay, so now let's put in our foliage and you can put whatever you want into these stockings now. Um, and I'm gonna just kind of cover these openings with some post-it tape. So I'm just gonna cover it like this so that I can, it looks like my foliages are coming out of the stocking. So when I add these in, and I'm just using these little ivy branches again, just a tip, like so. And then I'll put one here and add some more in here. And the same here. There we go. So you can see I just covered those openings so that it looks like my little foliage is coming out of there. And then I'll just add a little water to it. Like so. And let's add this other really fun stamp in here. So this one. And maybe I'll change up the green and I'll just use a different green here just to give it another. This is the, um, is this a 249? It's the same green here. This is the, this is the 177. Let's just do this one. And I'm just going to eat the top. And just put a little of this in. And just add a little water. There we go. And of course the red berries. Of course the little red berries that make it so festive. So fun. And I'm just going to take my twin tone now and I'm just going to just darken this area in here where all of those little that foliage is coming out. And we could add some detail here with the white paint. So we could add maybe just a little dot. And then maybe a little stripe. And maybe just some little white buds of some sort to kind of add a little more dimension. Okay, and that is finished. So cute. So cute and so fun. That would be so cute on a card, just the little stockings. And then you could kind of personalize it. You could, you know, write somebody's name on it and make it just so cute for them. Okay, so let's <clears throat> move everything out of the way here because I just make such a mess when I stamp. I don't know about you guys, but I just have stuff everywhere right here. 
including two things of water so that I can clean <clears throat> the white off of my brushes. Okay, so let's assemble our journal and finish it up, you guys. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is add in our um, our page. So we're gonna turn this over and do the back side. And the back side uh, are our little critters. So let's just see if these guys are all dry, and they are. And then let me get out. So I cut these out <clears throat> with a circle die set. <clears throat> So this is a small, uh, this is the, um, let me measure so I can tell you. So these are cut out with the one and a half inch. This looks like it's one and a half inch. And then this one is the next size and it is one and three quarters inch. And this is our double stitch um, circle dies from this uh, circle die set. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add my paper, my decorative paper to my page. So I've already pre-cut this, and I'm just going to um, get my glue out, my favorite glue, and just add some glue. You can use tape too when you're doing stuff like this. You can you can use um, um, adhesive, any kind of adhesive that you prefer. Oops, that's going to bug me if that's not straight. Okay, there we go. So I've got my um, <clears throat> my decorative paper. And I'm going to now add my little, glue my little critters onto my circles. And this, by the way, this cuts out with your die set. So I just pre-cut that. And I like this little polka dot paper because it reminds me of snow <clears throat> and it just seems really happy, happy. So any, anything is gonna, anything is gonna be fine here. You know, this, the paper that I'm using is all pretty generic. So this is gonna go down here like this. And then I'm gonna glue this little guy in here Make sure I'm on the screen here, you guys. Okay, so then this, this little guy will go in here. Glue him on. Right in the center. And there is our little page that's finished. We've got the truck on one side. <clears throat> and then we've got these little guys. <clears throat> these little guys. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this in. So I'm just gonna add glue to the side of my page and it's going to um, glue in right next to the other one. So just flush with the other one. You see how that's just right next to the other page and just glue that right in. Just like this. And then our final page will go right in here. So I'm gonna set this aside get out my next page and this one is going to go like this so it's going to glue in right next to the previous page so right in here just like this so this will be the side that the little church goes on and so i'm going to glue my paper on just like i did on the other page Just put that right in here like this. <clears throat> and then my little church, I'll tell you what size this is so that you can, um, you can cut yours. It is, let me get my ruler. So I cut this uh, two and a half by four, two and a half by four. And before I glue this in here, I'm just gonna go in now and put in that um, that dark, that little shadow. Forgot that. So I'm gonna just take my um, take my brush and just put in a little blue shadow under the snow. See how that just pops that out? It's just kind of an important step, it really is. 
underneath here, underneath here. You can see that just kind of pops up. Same with these little trees, just right under that snow. Because again, it's gonna be a little shadow. It's not gonna be just plain white. It's gonna have a little shadow underneath it where it's sitting in the tree. And we could do the same for this here too. Just right in here like that. And I think I'm going to take my um, my little brush and I'm going to just darken these, these windows a little bit. I kind of feel like these need to be just a little darker. Just kind of in the window. Just in the kind of in the corners. Because we've got that snow in here, so uh, you don't do the whole thing. And we'd see just a, we'd see a shadow across this door here where it's kind of tucked back. If you put the shadow in here, it kind of sets this door back. And then maybe some little shadows in here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's glue this in now. Add some glue to that. And this is just gonna glue right onto the page, right in the center. This would be a really good one to add a little snowflake to or a little sentiment. Make sure that's straight. Okay, so now let's do the back side of this one. Looks like it's all dry. So let's do the back side. So we're gonna add our decorative paper onto this side. And I just picked this little red and green stripe, thought it was so cute. So I'm gonna add my glue. You know, the patterns, you know, they should kind of, should kind of be uh, pretty simple because your focus is on the art, the incredible art that is in the journal. That's all original. So that's where the focal point is. And so try to keep your papers, you know, really simple when you're doing these journals. Try to keep them really simple so they don't overpower your, um, your painting. Okay, so now I cut the pocket out. And you can see the score lines on here. So just folding this in, just like that. We're gonna set the pocket right here onto the side. See how cute that is? And I'm gonna just glue this in. And I always glue the bottom down first and then the sides just to make sure that it's straight. And you know, for a pocket like this, I would really um, recommend glue as opposed to adhesive tape. And also when you're gluing your, um, your pages in, it's just, it's a good idea to use glue. Make sure that it really holds. So there we go with that one. And this will be the last page that we glue in And it's gonna go right next to um, this page here, just like that. So right directly flush with that page is where it's going, right here. And this glue I have, like this really dries fast. 
So if you're looking for a really good glue, you don't have something that you really love, um, this art glitter glue is just, it's the bomb. It really is. Love it. Okay, so that's in now. Look how cute, you guys. I've gotten this all done. And I'm just going to tuck, I, so I made this little, this little note that says warmest wishes. I just picked one of the sentiments. Um, you could write a little personal note and just tuck it into the envelope just like that. Be so cute. And then I cut this one, this little um, paper here, with the uh, rounded rectangle set, the die set. So this is part of our die sets too. So these are rounded rectangles. And um, I just I just cut this little red um, out of that. It actually fits perfectly right inside the cover. So I'm going to glue this in. Just like so. That fits perfectly there. And actually, I'll measure it for you so you can see what size die that is. It is. So it's three and a quarter by two and a half. Two and a half by three and a quarter. Works perfectly. And then the little stockings will fit right on here. Just like so. So let's glue those down. Make sure that's on there straight. Like so, how cute is that? And then of course you're gonna wanna add, you know, some glitter and maybe some little jewels or something sparkly um, into your journal. You could make it, of course, make it personal by adding your own gift cards or your own message or your own note in here. Um, it's just so fun. Make sure you go through and sign even if they're small, make sure you go through and sign all of your work. Every single one of these entries is a work of art and an original. So it's really, really important that you do that. Go through, sign every single one, even all of these little ones. Just put your initials in there and just sign them. You can see I signed some of them. I need to go back and do that too myself. And add your little details and then, you know, maybe gift this to someone really special who would absolutely treasure it. Just look at all the art. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 original paintings in here. It's just amazing and it's just so fun and it just will mean the world to somebody if you gift it, or maybe you've put so much work into it that you just can't gift it. You're gifting it to yourself and you're just going to put it, on, put it on your shelf and, <laughs> and just admire it. One more tip, you guys. So here's what I do. Here's how I keep mine. Um, and by the way, they fold in like this. So start with the left or the right, fold, fold, fold in, fold in, fold in, fold in. And then the top comes like this and folds over like that. And then your clasps. So I keep mine, all of my journals, in a photo box like this. So these come in those cases, you know, that you can buy. There's cases of like, you know, there's 12 in them. Some, some of them have more than that. These are little photo boxes, and they are the perfect size. So let me zoom out here so you can see. So they are the perfect size to house your little journal and keep it safe. So I just stack these up. I have all the journals that I have made are in a box like this. And I feel like it's a really good investment to have just to keep uh, these things safe because there are so many hours of work into them. And they really are, they're original. Oh, here's one more, one more original piece of art. Um, there's so many, you know, they're unique. They're one of a kind and they can't be replaced. And so they're all original. So keep them safe and uh, put them in something like this. I mean, this, this thing, these things are just great. So, but you can, and then you can buy a case, you know, they come in a case and you can keep them all in a case and just, you know, collect all your work like that. So let me, um, let me show you one more time the Harvest Journal set and uh, we will be starting this tutorial. We'll be starting this tutorial two weeks from today will be the first one. We're going to be doing the cover 
and the inside page. So these two pages and the cover will be that tutorial. And uh, we'll be using, let me show you what stamp sets actually, I probably should tell you that. Let's get these out of the way here. <clears throat> will be this set, the 5594 Harvest Scarecrow set, and it will be um, the pumpkin set and the, and the little truck. So these three will be in the very first one, and then we'll be using these later. So we're, we're going to be using the, uh, the little scarecrow. We're going to be using the pumpkin stack and this little truck, but we are also going to be using the tractor later, the pumpkins later, and this little can with the sunflowers later. So we'll be using them all, but we'll be using these three to start out with. And, um, Everything that I'm showing you here is in the bundle. If you want to get the entire bundle, there it is discounted. So you're going to get the paper that is available. Um, this is the paper pack, 5606 Harvest Journal paper pack. Um, these nine sets, 5596, 5595, 5594, 5593, my little guys, 5599, my mini mice and squirrel set. These little tiny guys. Uh, 5597, the wheelbarrow set. 5598, the harvest set with all the little um, hay bales. And the sentiments also. And the die set. So this is 5592, this is a harvest journal die set. These are all coming. So remember your bundle, if you buy the bundle... You will be getting the bu the bundle is going to ship. It's going to ship, but it will ship without these dies. So these are coming next week, and uh, they will come separately to you. So it's not going to hold up your order. If you buy any of these things in the bundle, the bundle is going to ship right away, and then these will come separate. But you will be getting them in just a few days. So we just couldn't get them here in time um, to ship with the bundle, and we didn't want to hold up. Um, shipping the bundle so that you can have these all ready, you guys, when we start the tutorial. We'll be starting that in two weeks. So let me flip my uh, camera around so I can say goodbye to all of you. Okay, and I'm back. Um, wow, that was a that's a marathon, you guys. But we had to finish the Christmas journal, and I wanted to um, go through and show you all of the harvest tutorials um, so that you could see. Don't forget the bonus journal, which is the um, the Halloween one. Don't forget this one. This one's coming also next week. These tutorials will be up. So you'll be able to see those and watch all those tutorials. They'll all be recorded. And then um, the harvest will start in two weeks. So thank you guys so much for being with me today. Um, okay, Carol, she says, thanks. Looking forward to finishing my Christmas journal. Yes, Carol. And can't wait to start the harvest one. Me too. I'll be so excited to start the harvest. Um, Tina, you are so welcome. You guys, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for ordering these. Thanks for your support all these years, you guys. Um, it has been so fun and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. So I hope you will finish up your journal, your Christmas one, and, uh, we'll be ready to start the next one. Don't forget Kendra on Tuesdays, back to basics. She is still plugging along. She's so busy, but she loves meeting on, meeting with all of you. So she always looks forward to her back to basics. And then um, I will be on again next week uh, with another watercolor project. And then we will be starting our journals the week after that. So if there are any questions, you guys, that you haven't had answered, put that in the comments. Joel is on and I will go back through and make sure that all of the questions have been answered. And uh, remember, Leah is out this week. So if you try to call, you probably will get the answering machine, but send us an email, feedback at artimpressions.com. She will be back next week. So she'll be out all this week. She'll be back next week. And then um, she'll be able to catch up on all of her emails and everything. But we are checking. We are monitoring her email. So if you do email us, somebody will get back to you. Okay, you guys. <laughs> That is it for today. That was a marathon uh, live. I love being with all of you. Thank you so much for all of your support. And I'll see you guys all next week.